Good to be in the Lord's house this morning. Good to see everybody out with us. And if your visitor's with us this morning, just get in today and just allow God to have his way this morning in this service. I, I feel like I've heard from the Lord this morning. Church, I, I got up real early this morning and began to pray and talk to God. And I felt like God spoke something into my spirit. And, and I, I want to do my best with him being our helper this morning uh, to bring what I feel like God spoke into our hearts. So if you have your Bible today, turn with us. John's Gospel this morning, the sixth chapter of the book of John. When we get there, this is familiar to us all. We've read it many times and you've heard these things preached over throughout the course of time, but just felt like God wants to bring it to our attention again this morning. John chapter 6 this morning, and we'll begin reading in the 61st verse of John chapter 6. John 6 and 61. And it said, And when Jesus knew within himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, for is it the Spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing? For the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew that from the beginning who they were that believed not on believe not and who should betray him and he said therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given of him of my father from the time many from that time many of his disciples went back and they walked no more with him then said Jesus unto the twelve he said will you also go away Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. We believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Would you pray with me today? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege to be in your house this morning. Thank you, God, for each person that's made the effort to be in the house of God today, Lord, wherever it might be. I pray, Lord, today that your spirit move. God throughout this globe Lord around this world as well Lord is here we pray God that your spirit touch lives and Lord that men be challenged to live for you I pray God that your hand be with us the Holy Ghost be our leader and our guide ask these things in Jesus name this morning amen and amen you may be seated thank you for honoring God's word the words of the Apostle Peter. I, I have loved this passage of Scripture. I have quoted it to myself. I've preached from it. I've read it many times. I love it. And it said, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Amen. I've thought about that lots of times in the course of life. You see, the enemy of our soul has many opportunities out there, has many directions that a person could go. But the disciples, when they had been called by Jesus Christ from their occupation in this life to be disciples and to follow him, they gladly left all, forsook everything, and followed him. They left everything that they knew. Now, now, saints of God, that's a biggie. When you walk away from everything that you are accustomed to, everything, and you lay it aside now, but we're going to follow Christ. And they came down. They went through many things. You got to, we talk about the miracles that they saw and they saw an abundance of them. The word of God's recorded of many, many, but the word of God doesn't record of them all. But they saw many things happen at the hand of Jesus Christ. You see the ups and you see the downs and of, their, of their life and their walk with him. You see Peter when he failed and you you see all the things that transpired. Now Jesus has come to them at this point and many of his disciples, now there were others there, this is the word of God's plain about this, there were others there, Jesus had been speaking to them about partaking of the of, 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 the, of his body and drinking of the, of the juice and that being his blood and those things being partaken there, the communion services that we go through and they were offended at that. 
that. And then the Bible said many of them went away. Now Jesus is speaking to his 12 followers. He gave them the option. He said, will you go away also? And I love that. Peter's reply, Lord, to whom shall we go? There's a man, folks, that sold out to this world. He's not going to go back. Did Peter fail? Yeah, he did. But he loved the Lord. Amen. With all of his heart. Peter was a man after the heart of God. And I want you to know something. I was praying this morning and I was talking to God. I was asking God for direction in this service. I prayed for you that's sitting in this service a long time ago. Amen. I prayed for you this morning that God would work in our heart and in our life because God knew a way before God knew from the foundations of the world who would be here on this August morning, 2018. Amen. He knew that. And I began to pray, God, you know what we need. And God spoke something to me this morning. I was just sitting there praying and talking to God. I said, Lord, I need a word for the people that's going to be at Jasper First Assembly of God. I need a word, God, from you. And God spoke something into my heart. And I quoted it to myself. I want to read you this this morning. That word that God spoke in our hearts found in Revelation chapter number 3 and verse number 8. Jesus said, I know thy works. Behold, I've set before thee an open door. Now I begin to think about that as God spoke that into my spirit. Behold, I've set before thee an open door. And immediately God began to bring this thing in to process at that period of time. I know I'm a simple minded man church but I want you to know something I believe God's trying to show us something. I went down to that and I begin to think about that doorway that we have. I, I go in and out on the job that I work on in the daytime. I knock on a lot of doors throughout the course of the day all around this part of the country in different areas uh, around this part of the region. I go to doors and I knock on them. I go to some homes that, 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 that it's unbelievable what it would cost to build that. And I've been to many that I've knocked on the door and you could tell by looking. I, I always try unless otherwise directed for whatever reason. I always try to go to the front door. I always try to do that. And I went, I went to the front door of a many a home and it didn't look like anybody ever went in that door at all. It didn't look like it was used. I've stood there and knocked on the front door and I've rung the doorbell and I've had people to maybe stick their head around the corner and say, hey, come on this way. We don't use that door anymore. We don't use that door very often. I want you to know something, child of God. That's the mentality that the world has about Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the door. Amen. But the world says we don't use that door anymore. Can I tell you something church this morning living for Jesus Christ is a personal relationship. It's a day by day life that you live and have in him. He said to his disciples he asked them a question. He said will you go away also? You realize that all the other followers or many of the other disciples had went away. They had turned away from from this because the sayings of Christ to them were a hard thing. They couldn't receive that now because it was greater than they could accept but his 12 stayed with him because they loved him with all of their heart and they walked with him out of love. They walked with him because they realized that he has the words of eternal life. Amen. That he has the words, not only the words of eternal life but this one that we're living for is one day going to give to us eternal life and eternal life will come through him. The disciples realized that as they walked with Christ. And I thought about what Peter had to say as the relationship grew and as things began to expound in their life as Peter loved him and God began to deal with him. He asked him, he said, are you going to go away like the others? Peter said, Lord, to whom shall I go? Saints of God, my mind this morning went back to the day when I came to the door of Christ Jesus. He 
He tells you and I, he is the doorway. I can remember the day in my life, my personal life, when I opened, when I came to the door and he allowed me in, amen. I remembered when the spirit of God began to draw me and quicken me and show me my failures and my faults and my problems in my life. I remember accepting him. I remember what it felt like. How many of you have ever been outside in the winter time and it's just been just as cold out there as it can be just bitter and you step on the inside of that house where that warm fire is. Man, doesn't it feel good when you step inside from every, all of the elements that's out there but you stepped into where the, where the temperature's acclimated. Maybe there's a good fire going over there somewhere and you back up to the stove or back up to the fireplace and you warm yourself around that doesn't it feel good but my church didn't it feel good the day of the night that you said Lord Jesus I'm a sinner man I'm a sinner lady and I need you in my heart and in my life didn't it feel good when you realized that that debt that you owed had been paid on the cross of Calvary the Bible teaches you and I that we received Jesus Christ by faith oh friend I want you to know something he's the only way to make heaven your home there's not a lot of doors, friend, or many that you can go, but only one and that doorway is through Christ Jesus and the shed blood on the cross of Calvary. The Bible said that if any other man try to come any other way, the same as a thief and a robber. There's no other way. We live in a society that says there is, but that's a lie, church. That's false doctrine and false teaching, but Jesus Christ is the only way to make heaven your home. And I thought about when the price was paid. I want you to know something. When you go out here to build a home and you build that home, and, and, and I thought about this this morning. That's one of the most expensive pieces of, of, of a building that home in a lot of homes is that doorway. I was amazed, Brother Kenny, when I went for the first time and saw what a door cost. I was amazed at what a door cost for a home. It's mind-boggling. It's an expensive part of that home. But what is it when you pull up to that house? What is that that you see for the most of it? It's that first thing that you notice and it's the way in. I want you to know something this morning, ladies and gentlemen. The price was great that Christ paid on the cross of Calvary for the remission of my sin and yours and not only for mine and yours but for the whole wide world world in eternity past. I want you to know something. When Christ went to the cross of Calvary, he was paying the debt for all mankind from the flood to where we are now and beyond where we are now that if any man would give their life to him and accept him and receive him, the debt had been paid by the sacrifice that he made there. Brother, I want you to know today that he paid the ultimate price. He gave what we couldn't do. Man had done by the best that they could through the law and obeying the law of Moses through animal sacrifice. They kept it but when Christ came that law was fulfilled in the works of Jesus Christ and child of God that gave us the access to him by faith and living for him. That's good stuff but I can tell you this morning he made the way for you and I. I believe that with every fiber of my being. Church, why wouldn't men come to him? Why wouldn't men want him? Why wouldn't men desire him? I've had people to say someday, Steve, I will. Oh, I intend to. I will at some point. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the day to get that done. This is the acceptable time. You and I are not promised tomorrow. I told a lady, this has been several years ago. I went in to visit a lady laying in her sick bed just at that time. I didn't know how close to death. She really was very sick.
sick and I walked in to visit with her and I went in and I sat down and I was talking to her she didn't uh, didn't know God and I was sitting there talking to her and trying my best to explain to her the goodness of God and the blessings of the Lord and she was trying to explain to me she had never been raised this way and it's hard for her to accept it and at that point I thought oh God I'm so thankful I've been raised the way that I have I'm so thankful I've been taught the way I've been taught I sat there for a moment of time and I was talking to her and I said but ma'am I said we've got to accept Jesus Christ as Lord I said listen I said and I forget now I was in my at that time my late 30s and I said ma'am I said I'm th I don't even know what I am I said I'm 38 or 9 years old I said I don't know uh, but I said ma'am I'm far as I know I'm perfectly healthy there's not a thing in the world wrong with me that I know of I said but listen I could leave this walk of life today and I said I want to know things is right between me and God if I stand before him I want to know that I want to know things is right she looked up at me and she said oh but sir she said you're a good man you preach the word and you do you do this I said but ma'am it's a relationship with Jesus Christ I said being good doesn't save you it doesn't get you into heaven it's a relationship with Jesus Christ it's not a works lest any man should boast and you could tell that just didn't register at all with her and I thought oh God you didn't make this thing so hard that men can't receive it and can't make it you made it simple that even a little child can receive it by faith and put their trust in it and live for you but why do men make it so hard it's because they're trying to go through another door they're trying to go through another door ladies and gentlemen it doesn't matter what you've done about what the key what you may have worked at how you may have worked it's about how you're living for God and are you serving him with all of your heart I begin to think about that trying to go through the other door and there's a world of people trying to make heaven their home by going in some other way and I begin to think this morning as I prayed about this talked to God and I walked around outside the house talking to the Lord about that door I was reading in John chapter 10 this morning I can find it again John 10 and 9 listen to what Jesus says in John 10 and verse number 9 he said I am the door and by me if any man enter in he shall be saved he shall go in and out and find pasture he said the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy Jesus said I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly he said I'm the good shepherd and he giveth his life for the sheep but he said in verse 9 the very first part of it he said I am the door by me if any man it will shall if any man enter in he shall be saved and he shall go in and out and find pasture I've wondered how many people have stood at that door throughout life and never entered in how many people have sat through church services like you and I are in today possibly even with you and I in a time past and heard that and heard that calling on that inner man and that spirit and that soul man that said come to me how many times have they stood at that valley of decision and at that doorway and all they had to do was just step in all they had to do was just receive him all they had to do was just call upon him and he would open unto them the door but yet they said no not today I'll come again I'll be like Felix and Agrippa I'll come again but friend when you read on about Felix and Agrippa you never find where them in the word of God where they ever made things right there was always to every individual it seems like the enemy of our soul says oh there's a more convenient season there's a better time there's a better way that you can do you can come when you get older you can do this or you can do that but the door 
as Christ stood and he, ho and he knocks and he asks to come in. I thought about that as I began to read. I thought, oh Lord, how many times have you touched a heart and a life? Ladies and gentlemen, sadly to say, I have saw that. I've saw God convict people. I, and I know these preachers in here has been there. They've seen it. I've been, in, I've, I've been in services where I've saw God just get a hold to somebody, I mean. And you could just sense, you could see that God was dealing with them. You could see that the Lord was touching them. But yet they would not come to him. We've seen it. It breaks my heart when I've seen it, but I've seen that. I've saw them sit there and sit through service after service and then turn around and go right back out there into that old world, turn around and go right back and, and, and just get worse all the time. But they had the opportunity to go through the door because God said, come on through here. I've got something on the inside that'll change your life. I've prepared for you. I've got a life for you. If you'll live for me and if you'll walk with me, I'll change your life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not speaking about something that I don't know anything about. I'm speaking from experience. God can change your life. He can change your life. He can take what the world has blackened and scarred and cheapened and change that. He can make you new in Christ Jesus only through and by the blood of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, we live at a time right now when there seems to be so many things going on out there. We live at a time when it seems like that many are coming again, our young people coming again, our, our children coming again, the church as a whole. Folks, I want you to know something. This world that we live in today, although we're breathing air in it, we're occupying in it, we're paying taxes in it, but this world you're living in today ain't your home. For the child of God, we're just a pilgrim at best. You may think you're going to be here forever, but I want to ask you something today. I learned this little concept a long time ago. I know it's simple, but I learned it a long time ago. One day I was sitting in, in a field over there that, that, that we've been, I guess, blessed to be the keeper of for a short period of time. I looked around there and I thought, man, at the hard work that's been put into this, my grandparents cleared that uh, and hired it cleared and helped do it all by hand. When they had that all cleared up, they cut it all off with a chopping axe and cleaned it all up in there and cleaned a big portion of that up. And I stood there and I looked at that and I thought, oh God, the hard work that went into that to have it rock piles off to the side where they piled up rocks and carried them over there and slid them over there with the mule and all that work that went into that. And God spoke to me very clearly. He said, there was a man here before them and there'll be a man here later. Yeah. Wasn't theirs. They just occupying it. Just something that was temporal. They came and they went. I want you to know something, friend. The things of this world is only a temporal thing. It's just temporal at best. Men come through it and they go by and then and if the Lord doesn't return, they're going to go out of this thing. But can I tell you something? There is something that's everlasting. When you step through the doorway of Jesus Christ, I, I said when you live for him and you work and you do everything to have what he has offered to you and I when you accept him as Lord. Amen. What does that mean, preacher? When I accept him as Lord, then you give him ownership of this soul man that's on the inside of you. Because he's not only just someone that you talk about on Easter and Christmas, but he's Lord now. What, 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 what is that about? That means that everything you do, you go through him with that. You got if you if you if you rent a home in this house, you don't go out there today and do a, a, a total remodel on that house without first talking to who, the landlord. Why? Because that home really doesn't belong to you; it belongs to him. But I want you to know something: this life of mine doesn't belong to me anymore. 
I gave it to him. And I learned a long time ago, getting really close to 30 years, I learned a long time ago that he's doing a lot better with it than what I did. I said, he's doing a lot better with it than what I did. Amen. Why? Because I gave him the lead way to take care of it. I had, I had it. I could do with it what I wanted to for a while. And I made such a mess out of it. I put scars on it that I have to deal with even to this day. But I'll never forget when I said, Lord, I want you to save my soul. Amen. And I stepped into that realm that I didn't know anything about. I stepped into where the presence of God was. It was a different atmosphere, church. I can tell you when you live for it, it's a different place than what the world lives in. You can lay down at night and you can say, Lord, I don't know what's coming tomorrow, but I know this, what I face tomorrow, I'll face with you. I have faced things, saint of God, that at a, that at a moment's notice, I have faced life-changing events that would blindside you. And I've stood by and I've said, God, I can't get through this. But somehow, some way, I feel you in the midst of this right here. The only way to get through it was with him. The only way to make it was through him. And I trusted in him. You know why? Because he is the doorway of eternal life to a place that he's gone away to prepare. He said, I am the door and by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved. This is the words of Jesus Christ. You got a red letter Bible, yours reads the same. And he said, and I shall go in and out, find pasture. He said, he shall be saved. Why? Because he's the door. Amen. He's the door. Would you bow your heads with us this morning? Musicians, would you help me today in this service? There's folks sitting right here this morning. As your heads is bowed and your eyes is closed. You've been thinking about eternity. You've been thinking about eternal things. As you saw so much of unchangingness of life, so many things in life change. And you're wondering, where would I spend eternity right now if I left this walk alive? Ladies and gentlemen, there's more to heaven than streets of gold, gates of pearls. Those are wonderful things that we read about the New Jerusalem. Some time ago, I was thinking about, I do this from time to time. I was thinking about family members that I've on this side I've said goodbye to. And I thought about as being in the ministry and being in church for a long period of time. Man, we've got close with people. I've, I've developed friendships with people in this church and other churches in our community. People, was, I was close to them. I loved them. They've gone home to be with Jesus. And I think about that once in a while and it makes me eager to go. But when I think about the one that paid the price, that I could have the hope on the inside of us of more than this life, I think about what Jesus done for me. He paid the price. I was praying this morning and God just spoke Revelation 3 to me. He said, I set before thee this day an open door. And I was asking God, I said, God, you know exactly who will sit in that house in a little while. You know exactly, Lord, who will be there. 
God spoke that to my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, there's an open door this morning. Somebody in this house as the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart this morning and challenges you to live for the Lord. I want to ask you something this morning. Would you be willing to receive Him? Would you be willing to accept Him? He's the only way. The only way this morning. I want to ask you this morning. Would you do something about eternity? Holy Spirit, come in this place. Would you be willing to do something about eternity? you be like many say come over let's go this other door no see that other door never leads you into Christ he's the only door he's the only way he's the only way He's the only way. He's the only way. That's it. The others in this house this morning. Praise the Lord, Brother Allen, would you come help me this morning? Come on, God's speaking to your heart. God's speaking to your heart. Will you come? He's the door. Accept Him. Come on. As God deals with you, come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Come on this morning. As God speaks to you, there's an open door. You can step in this thing. Through Jesus. That's the only way. Anybody else anywhere this morning? Anywhere else. Hallelujah. Would you come then find your place to pray, Christians? Would you come find your place? Talk to God.